Hello, everybody. Welcome to financial statement preparation. My disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are those of the author only and not the authors of employers or affiliated organizations, including but not limited to Irvine Valley College and the South Orange County Community College District. The presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. This presentation is copyright 2008 to 2021 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. Any distribution is strictly prohibited. So what we're gonna be doing today is going over a comprehensive question. Now, this typically comes at the end of when I've kind of like wrapped up teaching financial accounting. And usually along with the cash flows, I'll generally put this on a final exam. So let's go through and, and take a look at this. So right over here, uh, the first year of operations for Clen uh, basically was as follows. And so it's gonna give us a lot of, hold on. So it's gonna give us an unadjusted uh, trial balance. And so what we wanna do over here so it's giving us unadjusted numbers. And what we're gonna go through ahead and do is it's giving us additional information. It tells us about the equipment that was purchased, accounts receivable, uh, prepaid consulting services. And then it's also giving us some information about a loan payable, okay? So it's telling us more information about these balances here. In terms of what is being required of us is that I'm asked to prepare journal entries for the additional information above, prepare a multi-step income statement, prepare a statement of retained earnings, and then lastly, to prepare a classified balance sheet. So there's a couple different strategies I can adopt in terms of you know, doing this. Um, let's first kind of go through and look at when we have an unadjusted trial balance or in a trial balance, generally the way it's gonna be set up are assets, liabilities, equity accounts, revenue and expenses. And this is also happens to be that one of the things that I like to do as an instructor is to give you this. If you can memorize this T account here, this will pretty much give you how we go through and record transactions. AELOE or assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. This is the balance sheet equation, right? What does this tell me? Assets are generally increased with debits, decrease with credits. Okay, liabilities and equity accounts typically have credit balances, increased with credits, decreased with debits. Expenses, revenue, right? My income statement is generally be revenues minus expenses. But generally with revenues, I'm gonna record them with credit. Expenses, I'm gonna be recording those with debits. When I'm doing adjusting journal entries, I generally have four things that I need to answer. One is do my assets reflect the future economic benefit? Do my liabilities reflect my future obligations? Uh, do my expenses reflect what we used during the period? And do my revenues reflect what we earned during the period? My last rule for adjusting journal entries, and I do never adjust cash. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna to have to kind of go through and, and to figure out with this particular problem. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm, gonna, I'm being asked to do journal entries, but the way I'm gonna do it though is I'm gonna record them first in T accounts. I'll just use T accounts for the adjustments that I need and then I'll go from there. Okay, so the first one over here is it tells us the equipment was purchased on May 1st. It's expected to last for five years and will be depreciated using straight line, assume a zero salvage value. So with equipment, in order to show the use of the equipment, the way I'm gonna record it, and I always do it this way, is I'm gonna debit depreciation expense, and I'm gonna credit a contra asset account called accumulated 
depreciation. Okay, this is basically we accumulate the depreciation we take. It is going to reduce the carrying value of the, it's going to be basically be reducing the carrying value of my uh, equipment account. Okay. So to record depreciation expense, my formula is going to be acquisition cost minus salvage value divided by the estimated useful life. My acquisition cost in this case here was 60 minus a zero salvage value divided by an estimated useful life of five years. So the annual, so $12,000 will be my annual depreciation expense. However, in this scenario here, I did not use it for a full year. I bought the equipment on May 1st. So how many months did I use it for? Well, I used it for May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, or a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months. It may seem very silly that I'm going through and counting it out like this. However, it is extremely important that you do this because you will mess up on the months. So just make sure you count it out. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply this by eight twelfths or from May 1st through December 31st. So 8,000 is gonna be my depreciation expense for 2021. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to debit depreciation expense. I'm gonna credit accumulated depreciation. If I'm being asked to go through and to do this as a journal entry, My date for this one will always be the end of the year because that's how I go through and record my adjusting entries. If I've done this in a T account, it's already telling me that over here, I'm debiting depreciation expense. Over here, I'm crediting accumulated depreciation. Because I'm crediting accumulated depreciation, I have to indent the account. The last thing I'm missing from my journal entry is to record depreciation expense. Okay. So what I can do now is I can use create another column. So as I go through and make adjustments, there's a few different ways you can do this. You can actually show the adjusting and then show another column here, but I don't, the way I kind of do it is I'm just gonna go through over here and book my adjustments and I'll pull over all the other accounts. So depreciation expense, I'm gonna put down here with my other expenses. And then the accumulated depreciation on the equipment, I'm gonna go over here and put as a credit balance, right? This is my adjustments, okay? So that's letter A. Okay, so I go, I'm going really fast on this. I have other videos that I slow myself down a lot, but again, go back, take a look at those other videos. If you have questions or just ask a question below in the comments section and I can give you, I can point you to the right videos. Okay, so of the accounts receivable, 25,000, 25% is estimated not to be collected. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, when I look at accounts receivable, the important number for me is not the accounts receivable itself. And let's take a look at Facebook. And if I look at the financial statements for Facebook, and we'll just go over here and just pull this up real quickly. And if I look at accounts receivable on their balance sheet, what you're gonna notice is it's gonna say accounts receivable net. What does that mean of allowances? Well, what that means is that the number that is important for me to share with my investors is accounts receivable net or accounts receivable less the allowance for doubtful accounts.
And what exactly is the allowance for doubtful accounts? It's basically an estimate by management in terms of what we do not expect to collect. So it says here that 25% is estimated not to be collected. So my ending balance in this amount here is going to be 100,000 of AR times 25% or 25,000. Okay, so here is my ending balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts. However, though, for my adjustment in terms of what do I need to do to get to this balance, and again, this is a simplified problem. If there were write-offs, if there was collections of accounts previously written off, that get, this gets a lot more complicated, but it's not here. This is the first year of operation, so we can assume it has a zero beginning balance. So what do I need to do to get from zero to 25? Well, I'm gonna need a credit of 25 to the allowance for doubtful accounts. What is my debit going to be to? My debit is going to be to bad debt expense. Bad debt expense is what we always make once we've balanced out, once we've recorded everything else, bad debt expense is the last entry that I go through and do. So over here, 12, 31, 21, I'm debiting bad debt expense. I'm crediting my allowance for doubtful accounts over here for 25 and 25, and this is gonna be record bad debt expense. So I'm gonna go now and go back over here to my accounts receivable, allowance for doubtful accounts. I have a credit balance here of 25. I'm debiting bad debt expense over here for 25. Okay, so that's letter B. Again, going really quickly, if this is too much, too fast, too soon, there are other videos that I have, okay? So go back and take a look at some of the accounts receivable videos that I have. Over here, prepaid consulting services consists of an advance given to a vendor on August 1st. The vendor will be providing consulting services for a period of 12 months at a rate of 10,000 per month. Well, guess what? We gave our vendor $120,000. Amounts are in thousands or 12 months times 10. So when I look at prepaid consulting services, right now, as of August 1st, 2021, this had a balance of 120. When I look at this, do my assets reflect the future economic benefit? So is this prepaid consulting services, is this amount still 120? The answer is going to be no, because several months have passed. So let's go through and figure this out. So how much of this have I used during the period, right? So over here, my prepaid consulting services was a total of 120. Uh, my rate per month was 10. So that means I paid for a total of 12 months of services. Or prepaid, okay? So how many, how much of the services did I use in 2021? Well, I used eight basically from August 1st through December 31st, or one, two, three, four, five, or five months, right? So basically this was five months. My rate per month is 10. Tells me right here, rate is 10,000 per month. And so my total amount is going to be my consulting services expense or what I used during 2021 is gonna be a total of 50. Okay, so right over here to record consulting services expense, right? How do I record expenses? I'm gonna record that with a debit. So over here, I'm debiting this for 50. For every debit, I need a credit. What account do I credit? Well, I'm gonna credit prepaid consulting services because I've used up part of this 120. So my ending balance over here is going to be 70,000. Well, is that balance correct? Whenever you're doing an adjusting entry, it has to make sense from both sides. The expense has to reflect what we've used. The asset needs to reflect its future economic benefit. 
And if I look at the months of the future economic benefit or January 1st, 2022 through July 31st, 2022, this is gonna be a total of seven months, right? So January, February, March, April, May, June, July. My rate per month is 10,000. So my prepaid consulting services balance is gonna be 70,000. And if I take a look over here, oh, this is 70 grand, that's great. So I know I bet I've done this one correctly. Okay, now over here, we've kind of gone 8, 25, 25, 8, right? This is gonna be a little bit different, but it'll still work. So my prepaid consulting services now has a debit of 70. Over here, my consulting services expense now has a balance of 50. Okay, it may look a little bit funky, but at the end of the day, it's gonna make sense. Okay, so right over here, let's take a look at letter, uh, letter D, right? I'm going through, I'm skipping a step because a lot of times you would see that, oh, you put this over here as the credit and then you do 120 minus the 50, you get 70, but I'm just skipping that part. Okay, letter D, the loan payable. So I borrowed 100,000 represents an amount borrowed by the company on November 1st. The first interest payment will not be due until October 31st, 2025. The loan bears interest at 12%. It does not matter whether or not we've actually paid for the interest. The important thing is we've used the money. So over here to record the use of money, if I borrow money, if it is a loan payable, again, have videos on this previously, I'm going to debit interest expense and I'm going to credit interest payable. Okay, so this will always be my adjusting journal entry if I have a loan. So over here, how, what do I need to go through and record? Well, my loan amount is 100,000, right? That's my loan payable due October 31st, 2027. My interest rate is 12%. Whenever I see an interest rate, it is always an annual rate. So my annual interest is going to be 100,000 times 12% or a total of $12,000. So this is my annual interest. What I then do is I say, well, how many months did I use it for? I used it for November and December. So I'm using it here for a total of uh, two months, right? So November, December, 2021. So my interest expense for this particular year is gonna be 12 times two twelves for a total of $2,000. So to go through and to record this, I'm gonna debit interest expense for two, I'm gonna credit interest payable for two. Now, one of the things I forgot to do is I forgot to do some of these adjusting journal entries. So let's just go through and do this real quick. I've got consulting services expense, prepaid consulting services, and this is to record consulting services expense. Over here, I've got 1231.21. I'm debiting interest expense. I'm crediting interest payable. Okay. So those are my journal entries, right? Make sure you're indenting the credit description. Make sure you have an account description of what happened, right? It's gotta be reasonably close, okay? So over here, I've got interest expense and then I'm crediting interest payable, okay? So at this point in time, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring forward the other balances. So right over here, my cash balance has not changed. Accounts receivable has not changed. Property, plant, and equipment, we've depreciated. Loan payable hasn't changed. I've just adjusted it. Over here, common stock, additional paid in capital, retained earnings, sales revenue, um, sales discounts, cost of goods sold, selling expenses. So that's all I've gone through and I've done all of that. And what I can now do over here is total up my columns and I now am balanced. Okay, so this is, I've balanced over here. So what I'm now ready to go through and do is to make a multi-step income statement. Okay, 
So when we're doing the multi-step income statement, this is the Home Depot. And what you'll notice here is net sales minus cost of sales or cost of goods sold gives you gross profit minus SG&A gives you total operating expenses. So when you're going through, and again, this is how I do it for my classes, right? So you're gonna find some instructors are real sticklers, right? For formatting, I could care less because at this point in time, when you're going through and learning accounting, it's hard, right? It's a lot of work, it's a skill, it's hard to do. So when it comes to the formatting, I'm a little bit more lenient to an extent. So let's go through and take a look at this one. We're asked to prepare a multi-step income statement. That means I do not take revenues minus expenses. Rather, I need to take sales minus cost of goods sold, and this gives me my gross profit. So let's go through and do this one here. So I have KLNE, KLEN, right? This is the Nelk boys. I'm trying to fully send it. Uh, income statement for the year ended 12, 31, 21, okay? Amounts in thousands. Okay, so right over here, got my amounts in thousands, right? So I'm gonna start over here with my sales revenue, less sales discounts, returns, and allowances is gonna give me net sales. When you see this net sales over here for the Home Depot, this is not internet sales. This is sales minus sales re discounts, returns, and allowances. Again, if those terms do not seem familiar to you, got videos that you can go through and check out. So over here, my sales revenue is 1,000 minus my sales discounts, returns, and allowances gives me net sales of, now I get a date, okay. so my basically of 980, okay? Why do I put these out like this? So you know that when I'm going through, you can see that how I'm coming up with the result, okay? That's why I do it. So less cost of goods sold. Okay, my cost of goods sold right over here is at 350. This is gonna give me my gross profit my gross profit is going to be 630. Okay. My next thing I'm going to do is less selling, general, and administrative. Okay. So over here, I've got selling expenses, depreciation expense, uh, bad debt expense, and consulting services expense. I'm not including interest expense or interest revenue because I would need to put that in a different category, right? So my operating expenses or my selling general and administrative, this is what this over here kind of goes through and includes. So my total selling general and administrative is going to be 163. So my operating income is going to be, or my income from operations is going to be 467. Less other income slash expense. So I've got interest expense. This amount here is at two. And so this is going to give me my net income. Okay, at 465. Now, what is a way I can check my work? And let me just go through and kind of fill this out here so you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Okay, I didn't put a tax rate on this one here, but how do I check to see if my net income is correct? Well, if I take my sales of a thousand minus all of my expenses over here, I get 465. So I know I've computed this net income correctly. Okay. So over here, what's the next thing I need to do? 
Next thing I need to do is to prepare a statement of retain earnings. What is the statement of retain earnings? The statement of retain earnings essentially acts as the bridge between the income statement as well as the balance sheet, right? So this is gonna be my statement of retained earnings. Remember, how do I know it's for the year ended? Because it's telling me it's asking it as for the year ended. That's how I know how to do it. So how do I do a statement of retained earnings? My beginning retained earnings is gonna be zero plus my net income is going to be 465 less dividends. Well, I forgot to include those. That's not gonna happen on my final. And then I'm gonna get over here, my ending retained earnings, okay? Okay, a 465, all right? So what we do next is you can oftentimes see, you'll oftentimes see instructors, and this is not necessarily the incorrect way to go through and do this, but what you will see sometimes they'll say, oh, let's go through and use this account called income summary, okay? They oftentimes will want to go through and to use basically income summary. That's not the way that I go through and teach my students how to go through and to do these types of questions. The way I do it is I close out my temporary accounts to retain earnings. What is a temporary account? It's anything that's gonna be on the income statement plus dividends. So how do I go through and do this? Well, I'm gonna go through and do it this way just to be kind of as a refresher for you or for those of you that are new to my method way I go through and record things. But there's a couple different shortcuts that we can kind of utilize to make our lives like a little bit easier. So let's just kind of go through and take a look here. So. What I'm going to go through and to do is I'm going to basically bring forward all of the accounts that appeared on my income statement, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and list out all of the accounts that were on my income statement. And I'm just gonna go through and copy this from the trial balance. Now, for those of you who have different instructors, they may say, oh, you gotta use like this income summary. To me, that's just a lot of work that doesn't really get you a lot of places. So what I do is I bring forward all of everything that's going to be on my adjusted trial balance, or that's a temporary account. Again, it's going to be things like sales revenue, credit balance of 1000 sales discounts, returns, and allowances that had a debit balance of 20 my next one over here is cost of goods sold that had a balance of 350. I had selling expenses that had a balance of 80. Over here, I had depreciation expense that had a balance of eight. My next one is bad debt expense that had a balance of 25. I then had consulting services expense that had a balance of 50. And then over here, I had interest expense that had a balance of two. Now, when I'm going through and creating base or when I'm going through and uh, doing this process here, what my beginning retained earnings balance is zero. However, it should now have a balance of 465. How does it get to be that way? Well, the way it's gonna get to be that way is that we're gonna go through and close out all of our temporary accounts to retained earnings. How do we go through and close out our temporary accounts to retain earnings? It's going to be whatever we need to do to make the account go to zero. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go through and say, all right, sales revenue, it's at a thousand. This is a temporary account. It just tells me what my revenues were for the period. I have to make it go to zero. So what do I do? I'm gonna debit sales revenue. I'm gonna do the opposite to retain earnings or credit retain earnings. 
sales discounts, returns, and allowances. How do I make it go to zero? I'm gonna credit this, this goes to zero, but I have to do the opposite to retain earnings or debit retain earnings for 20. Cost of goods sold, again, same process over here. If you've had me for my classes before, or if you've seen this before, this is brings up many fun memories, right? So I've got over here, and then I've got that debt expense. Then I've got consulting services expense, and then interest expense. So when I go through, so all these accounts have now been closed out to zero, okay? So my ending balance and retained earnings, this has to equal 465. So if I go through and I look at this in terms of totaling this up, I get a total of 535 of debits. I have a thousand of credits. Subtract the smaller from the larger value. I have an ending balance of 465, which equals this. So again, I know that I'm good to go in terms of this for this particular problem, okay? So just right over here. Now, do I have to go through and do all of that work? And the answer is no. What I can do is after I have this ending retained earnings balance, at least for this particular, my, this particular exam, is I'm now gonna create a post-closing trial balance. And essentially what this will reflect is what I just did in retained earnings. So my ending retained earnings balance had an ending balance of 465, right? This is the ending statement balance on my statement of retained earnings. Wow, it really does not like my numbers today. There we go, okay. So sales revenue, zeroed out, right? All of these temporary accounts have been zeroed out. That's the whole purpose of doing this exercise down here. These are temporary accounts, meaning that they are just tracking information for the year. They have to be zeroed out and we'll start fresh the following year. So now over here, I'm gonna just bring over all of my other balances. These do not change during the closing process. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and test my work. Okay. So right over here. So this is now my total debits equal my total credits. Okay. The last thing I'm gonna be asked to do is I'm gonna be asked to do a classified balance sheet. What does a classified balance sheet look like? It basically means that I'm going through and I'm separating my current versus my non-current assets. The best company to look at as an example of this is Apple, right? I like using Apple because I like the way that they have it designed. Um, so if I just go here. Okay, so for Apple, if I look at their financial statements right over here, you'll see that, oh, classified balance sheet, current assets, non-current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities. What do each of these items mean? Well, a current asset is something we're gonna be using in the coming year, non-current is beyond a year. So over here, KLEN Inc, balance sheet, Okay, how do I date it? As of, it's a snapshot in time, right? Some people will get very upset that I have not capitalized balance sheet. So I'll do it right here. Okay, so I'm gonna start over here with my assets, right? And then I'm gonna go over here to my current assets or those assets I'm gonna be using within the year. So I'm gonna have cash. And again, if you look at Apple, Apple is straight up and down. I don't do it that way. And it's just because I want you to understand where the different numbers are coming from. Okay, so I don't 
make it beautiful. I don't have double underlines or any of that kind of stuff. So over here, prepaid consulting services, I'm gonna be using this within the next year. Now with accounts receivable, I don't, I have got a contra account here. So the number that's important to me is gonna be accounts receivable net. So I'm gonna have accounts receivable less my allowance for doubtful accounts. So this is gonna be 100 minus 25. So my accounts receivable net is gonna be 75. So my total current assets are going to be 600 plus 70 plus the 75. Okay. So my current, my current assets are 745. My non-current assets is generally going to be the property, plant, and equipment. But again, I need to show property, plant, and equipment net of accumulated depreciation. So again, when you see Apple, right, this is property, plant, and equipment net. Okay, so this is net of the accumulated depreciation. You have though, in my class at least. You have to show me how you're getting to that net balance. Okay. Okay, so right over here, I've got 52. So my total non-current assets are going to be 52. My total assets will be 52 plus the 7045. Okay, here we go. All right, so that's my total assets. Now for my liabilities, right? I'm gonna have current liabilities. For my current liabilities, I'm gonna have accounts payable. My accounts payable is at 30. The loan payable and the interest payable are not current liabilities. Why is that? They're not due by December 31st, 2021. In fact, they're not due until 2027. Even the interest on this is not gonna be due until 2025. So my only current liability is gonna be accounts payable. Okay. So my non-current liabilities, it's gonna be my loan payable. And this amount here is gonna be at 100 interest payable. This is gonna be at two. So my total non-current liabilities is gonna be at 102. So my total liabilities will be at 30, plus 102 or 132. Okay. For my owner's equity, I just have three accounts. I have common stock at par. I have additional paid in capital common stock and I have retain earnings. So over here, this is gonna be at a thousand One ninety nine and four sixty five. So my total owner's equity is going to be at six sixty five. So over here, what I now need to show, though I'm not done, I have to show that my total assets are equal to my liabilities plus my owner's equity. So I'm gonna have total liabilities plus owner's equity. And this here is gonna be 132 plus 665. And that has to equal my total assets. Okay. So that is a comprehensive problem. Remember, there's gonna be a lot of shortcuts that you can go through and do. 
again, do you have to go through and prepare this? Do you have to go through and do this? The answer is no, right? It's just a way you can kind of go through and check your work. But again, this kind of problem is probably one of the more important questions that I see in financial accounting. This is generally the very first exam I give for my intermediate accounting students. So it's a great way to kind of go through and review. So uh, thank you for joining me here today. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a good one.